After thoroughly enjoying the warmth of Portugal and Montenegro, I decided to head somewhere cold next for December. Kraków is one of the largest and oldest cities in Poland, and was the official capital until 1596. It's been through a lot, with Tatar invasions in the 13th century, Nazi occupation during World War II, and then communism right after. Luckily, this beautiful city has proven to be quite resilient, and has now established itself as the cultural center of Poland. I arrived at the beginning of December, and my Airbnb host informed me that I was there just in time for the nativity scene competition happening in the main square. It's a Krakow Christmas tradition from the 19th century, where individuals build nativity scenes using Krakow as the backdrop, and it is now recognized on UNESCO's Intangible Cultural Heritage of Humanity list. Of course, one of the first meals I had to have was pierogi, or Polish dumplings. Since I was staying in Krakow for a couple of weeks, I went and picked up some groceries. The Airbnb I stayed at was just outside of the old town, but still super convenient. access it from within the courtyard of the building, making it a very quiet place to stay. As in other cities, one of the first things I did was book a free walking tour of the Old Town to get acquainted. During the tour, I learned that the park that now surrounds the Old Town used to be a moat, and the entire town would have actually been around four meters lower. While the walking tour included a quick look around the grounds of Vavil Castle, I knew I'd have to come back another day on my own. Vavil Castle sits on top of Vavil Hill, as part of the old town, and was home to the kings of Poland for centuries. Inside, there are a number of different exhibitions that you can get tickets to. I just chose to see the state rooms and got an audio guide for it.
Going back to Renekovne, the main square in the old town, this is where you'd find the Cloth Hall. Built in the 13th century, it was the center of trade for merchants all over the region. Nowadays, the stalls mostly cater to tourists with souvenirs like amber jewelry and wooden boxes. Here you can also find the museum, Renek Underground, which tells the story of medieval Krakow and what life was like during that time. It's cool in that it utilizes video, sounds, and interactive elements to present information, so I quite enjoyed it. Since I was in Krakow in December, the main square was taken over by the Christmas market. All sorts of food and gifts are sold in the wooden stalls. It was my first time at a proper European Christmas market, and it was a wonderful experience. One of my absolute favorites at this market was the Osipek, or salted sheep cheese, served with cranberry sauce. Another fun little thing I did here was go to a piano recital at the Chopin Concert Hall. I got my ticket on Get Your Guide, which I'll link below. Frédéric Chopin was a Polish composer of the Romantic period, known for quite a number of famous pieces. Even if you don't know what they're called, you'll recognize them when you hear them. Sesame, sale, papi si. Okay. Uh, can I get the papi? Papi si? If you head south away from the old town, you'll quickly reach Kazimierz, the old Jewish quarter. I visited on a Sunday morning, so it was definitely quieter than usual. Walking through the neighborhood, I noticed that the buildings had a little bit more graffiti and looked slightly more worn compared to those in the old town. I then stumbled upon the flea market in Platz Nova, where people were selling clothing and trinkets. <laughs> the thing I was interested in here, however, was neither of those. Zapikanki is often referred to as Polish pizza, and is said to be the best from the stalls here. Eventually, I stumbled upon the famous passage from Schindler's List, Mrs. Dresner's Courtyard. While Kazimierz is certainly a very historic neighborhood, it has also become a very trendy one, with cool vintage shops, cafes, and bars popping up. I visited Mletcharnia, a cozy little cafe decorated with old portraits and knickknacks. It was very much my vibe. The southern end of Kazimierz bumps up against the Vistula River, the longest river in Poland.
In this area, you can also find Schindler's Factory, a museum that's not actually about Oskar Schindler, but about the overarching history of Krakow from right before Germany's invasion up until after the end of the German occupation. It was honestly one of the best museums that I've been to, as it's super detailed and informative, well-organized and engaging. I think that one of the most important things to do if you visit Krakow is to visit Auschwitz. I decided to go with a guided tour. Auschwitz, as most of you would know, was a concentration camp established by Nazi Germany during World War II. It is now a museum and memorial that honors the lives of the over 1.1 million human beings, including almost a million Jews, that were lost here senselessly. It's difficult to describe the feeling when you actually see this place in person. On December 11th, the city was blanketed in snow. Another thing I really enjoyed and would recommend doing was visiting the Vilichka salt mine. It's actually not in Krakow itself, but in the town of Vilichka. Normally you can take the train to get there, but on the day that I went, the train wasn't running, so I had to take a bus. 40 minutes later, I arrived in Vilichka. The salt mine was only a few minutes walk away. The Vilichka salt mine was one of the world's oldest operating salt mines, producing salt from the 13th century up until 2007. Our tour began by descending 380 steps below ground. Our guide took us through winding corridors of salt that you can touch and showed us cool installations and sculptures also made of salt. When a Polish prince called Boleslaw proposed to Hungarian princess Kinga, her father, King Bela, insisted on a traditional dowry. He told us that what we were seeing on the tour was probably only about 1% of the entire network. The coolest part, however, was probably St. Kinga Chapel, an entire church situated just over 100 meters underground, with everything made from salt, including the chandeliers. Last one. Mm -hmm. 
discussed. Yeah, a lot. After spending two hours underground, it felt good to re-emerge to the warm glow of the afternoon sun. I decided to have a late lunch right in town. Before I end off this video, there are a few other food and drink related places that I wanted to mention. Vodka is a very popular drink in Poland, and before I visited here I actually never knew that it could come in so many flavors. Luckily, at Vodka Cafe Bar you can try different flavors by ordering a flight of six vodkas. I picked caramel, slow, honey, mango, apricot, and chocolate. The caramel and apricot ones were my favorites. One of the best meals I had in Krakow was at this nice restaurant in the old town called Miod Malina. Here I had pork cutlet and apple pancakes, which were absolutely delicious. And finally, I really liked this restaurant that was just outside of the old town, near my Airbnb. There is no English menu available, so the girl at the counter just translated everything out loud for me. The menu changes daily, and you can have a soup, a main, and compote, all for 28 zwote. Everything was delicious, and really hit the spot on that cold winter day. 